Hello, this is the aftermarket report for Vegas and Jim. Today's date, December the 19th, 2018. And guess what? Vegas is back. Hey, everyone. I've got to say, I really missed being on uh, with Jim uh, talking to you guys. So thanks for um, being patient while I could return from my trip to Israel with a horrible cold. So uh, I've been, you know, slowly recovering and also adjusting to the time zone of a seven hour difference. So thank you. And thanks, Jim, for the nice welcome. Yep. Well, let me tell you, I probably chose a pretty good week to be away because the markets have been a little bit off. But, you know, when the market's off, our goal here uh, with I Love Stock because we are here to help the trading community, is really to try to find stocks that can have some movement based on volume and news. So, you know, even though sometimes the markets are red and there's some stuff happening out there, uh, we try to focus on, you know, what can we do to help people still make some money. So on that note, I first want to talk about what I love so much. You guys know, I love the Fearless Girl statue. Now, I don't know if Jim can show that to you, but um, for those of you that don't know, this Fearless Girl statue uh, was sponsored actually by State Street. And uh, this Fearless Girl statue was uh, situated in front of the Bull uh, in New York City and most recently was relocated in front of the New York Stock Exchange building. And I love that she's there and she's standing in a pose. And, uh, you know, it basically means, you know, fearless girl and um, I can do anything. And, um, you know, nothing's going to stand in my way. And I love it because it's about women and empowerment and, uh, you know, you know, not feeling discouraged that, you know what, you can do it. You know, it doesn't matter your educational background. You can do anything you want. You put your mind to it. Um, so I love that. And the other message it's actually for really is to encourage uh, these fortune companies, these fortune 100, 500 um, global companies around the world to actually bring more women executives to the board. Um, there's a lot of companies that are financially doing so well, but they don't have any women on the board. So this is definitely to encourage those companies to bring more women executives to the board report that they are actually making some changes in a lot of companies, promoting more women to the board. So that is awesome to hear. And I'm just so excited now that the statue is standing in front of the Nisey building. So this is fabulous news, and I hope to be able to see that very soon when I head out to New York in the new year. So congratulations to the women traders. This is great news for everybody. So thank you, and thank you to all the men. I got to say, a lot of men... A lot of the men support uh, women traders, and I really appreciate all the men that support me every day, and I thank you all so, so much. And Jim always is one of my favorite cheerleaders. So, 2468, to... who do I appreciate? Vegas. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what Jim says, sings to me on a regular basis. So he's a great cheerleader. Um, so one of those, a couple stocks we're going to talk about today for sure is uh, M-R-I-N Cali, K-A-L-I, sorry, uh, U-X-I-N, T-L-R-Y, and um, A-R-Q-L. And of, of course, don't forget, I will talk about the Fed rates and what happened today, but I'll leave that to the end, okay? So stick around. So let's first talk about M-R-I-N. Now, I got to tell you, this stock really really shocked me a little bit because when it started running today i mean it opened up uh it went around 9 30 around 3 41 and um you know it ran as high as 7 84 and let me tell you that when i was um reading about the news i mean at the time that it was running i knew there was news but it was just, I was so involved in looking at another stock that I'm going to talk about in a minute uh, that I didn't really take the time to really read this news properly. 
But you know what? The news is amazing. And I don't know if you guys read it out there, and I encourage everybody that you should be reading the news because this will help you determine maybe sometimes position size, also determine if you're going to hold the stock, maybe swing the stock, maybe invest in the stock. So it's really important to read the news. So uh, Marin Software um, actually entered into a revenue sharing deal with, of course, Google. I mean, hello, if you hear that name in a PR, would you not think, wow, this stock's going to rip? Of course it's going to rip. I mean, why wouldn't it? So the stock, uh, they entered into a three-year revenue sharing deal with Google. And what they're going to be doing is developing its enterprise tech platform and software. So the contract is going to last until September 2021. What the pact will either end or technically be renewed. So as a result of this, the stock was ripping. So what it's going to happen is they're going to get um, Marin, M-R-I-N, is going to be getting payments from Google based on revenue generated tech platform in connection with Marin's clients spend on search ads, which appear on Google search only. So if you guys notice when you do a Google search, sometimes you'll see little ads pop. So they'll have um, some sort of uh, relationship there. And it will also be paid by Google with regarding to what their clients spend on search ads appearing on what they classify as eligible search engines, which exclude Google during certain uh, the contract year. So I think this is awesome news. Um, and I think that we can probably foresee more of this stock. So I'm going to let Jim talk about the chart because I got to tell you, this chart had a lot of uh, ups and downs today. And we called so many breakouts today on the stock. So a lot of people made very, very good money. So I encourage you, if you're not even in the room, please come visit. I mean, nothing to lose. You can come by for two weeks free. If you don't want to join, don't worry about it. Just come and make money and, and learn about trading. But uh, nothing like listening to Jim's calls on voice live. So Jim, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk about the chart. Oh, this was... This was mentioned in the aftermarket report yesterday, MRIN. So it had a year high of 1150, and we just had a bottom here last month of right around 215. So pretty nice little chart, pretty nice sell-off right there. And then when you get news like this, man, it, it took back half of a year's, maybe three quarters of a year's gains in one day, two days. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a 20-day chart, just kind of glance at what we did here. Yesterday, I called this out on the video because I saw the breakout after hours. It had that had some news. And then today, we pulled straight back to what I called a support level. So I drew a trend line right there at 357. And all these trend lines that are above here, all them there were made today. So what was so cool about this stock is every time it would hit a new high, it would pull back a little bit. But we were very bullish on this stock, and the and the rotation and the volume was just so perfect for this. The float, I mean, it was a low floater, so it had the low float people in on it. People tried to short it in and out today a few times. So I'm going to pull up what I call the five-day, 15-minute. The breakout kind of started right there, and then we had the, the day where it kind of relaxed, and I flipped this thing two times yesterday, and then I mentioned it after hours here when it was right around 362. So it went ahead. It opened up right about that price. It consolidated all day and all morning. So I the, I told the room, you know, right first thing in the morning, keep an eye on this thing at 353, and we ran all the way up to 784 with this three quarters of the day. And then we had, of course, you're going to have the people sell off and take profit at the end of the day. So I'm going to post up a one minute daily. I mean, a one minute, a daily one minute, excuse me. And you can see how we took this stock today. I had a trend line started right here. And once we broke past that trend line, and I'm going to magnify it just a little bit so you can get a bigger picture. I've told the room, maybe we can pull back to this area of support right here, right around 422. So it created a little base off that support, and we were able to get back in it again, and we followed it up, and it ran up to around 
470, 450 something, and it had the pull back and hit that 50 at 100 SMA. And I have that on a daily one minute. And this is the trend line that these three trend lines is the ones I use 50, the 100, and the 200 on a breakout stock. So it ran on up, and we created a little pendant flag right here, and then I called another breakout. We had a flag right here. I mean, this thing was just so beautiful today. I can't see that flag because just the way this chart is, but you see this little flag I have right here. And it broke on up, and it came back to support, and it went ahead and went on up, and we were able to flip this. I, I, can't, I can't tell you how many times I flipped this thing today. I mean, I was in and out of it, in and out of it, in and out of it all day long. So we ran this thing all the way up to about this level right in here, right around 7 bucks. And it decided to go ahead and pull on back and consolidate. So I blew this box up here. And I'm going to, I just loved this chart today. I mean, it, it had me shaking, screaming, and yelling because this was a play of the month the way this channel ran. So we were able to bounce up and down off the 100 into the 50, and we broke above it, and we bounced down, hit that 100 again, and then we had that big breakout. And look at this, and then the sell off came. And I tried to get in here a couple of times, and I made a few mistakes, but I was still I was up real good for the day. And then at the end of the day, I called that support out again, right here around 586. And then we had the bounces, and we hit it all, brought it all the way back up here to up to 670. So we're kind of consolidating after hours. This stock had great news. This is not the end of the story yet. So I'm just going to pull up this one-year chart and remind you, keep this on your watch list. Any kind of pullback will be very healthy. Kind of look at this yearly chart, and I'm thinking maybe around 626 if it wants to pull back, because that there was a support right there. But we had 1150 high about the same time last year. We made back three quarters of that gain today. So let's try to see if we can get a small pullback on this thing tomorrow and run it back on up to the previous highs. See, we hit the last high that I called, 782, and I just kept going up the table. I mean, it was just nonstop, and every time it hit one of my supports, resistances, it would stop and consolidate a little bit, and then boom, we'd get another 10, 15 cent bounce. So keep MRIN on the top of your watch list tomorrow. I guarantee you're gonna make some money on this stock. And the next one, Vegas wants to talk about it's going to be Cali, K A L Y. Yeah, so Cali, as you guys know, I love this one. I mean, so many of them I actually love. And they actually say, don't fall in love with stocks, but you know what? I love stocks, so too bad. Um, so Cali, as you guys know, has had quite a lot of PRs. I mean, Cali is in the designs, they're into markets, they distribute apparel and very weird company. I mean, they're into products for 20 to 45 year old men <laughs> under the VLOV brand in the People's Republic of China. And they sell, they sell their product to distributors, but also directly to consumers. So this is a weird stock because they're also into the marijuana sector. <laughs> so they had very good news. And I like this news on Cali uh, because they entered um, they brought on board uh, a cannabis biotech inventor, uh, Frederic Ferry, who's going to be the new CEO to lead the company in the $28 billion medical cannabis market. Now, if you guys remember, Cali had a PR uh, a couple months ago with regards to NCM Biotech, and they were basically uh, taking it over. They actually took over that company. However, that company, uh, Mr. Ferry's company, uh, he's the one that obviously owned that company. So now they brought him on board to become the CEO of Cali. So, you know, part of this buyout that they did with this uh, particular NCM biotech medical advisory team, uh, now they, you know, selected the founder, uh, Mr. Ferry, to join Cali. And he is extremely excited um, he says, you know, he, he's going to bring in um, nutritional wellness products, also the hemp formula and EverX that they already have that's generating revenue. And um, there's going to be a lot of really good synergies 
uh, that are going to be in this particular company. And uh, they will have, I believe, a separate PR uh, that will actually publicly formally announce um, the Cali subsidiary to include specific information on clinical research studies uh, and also with regards to one of their proprietary cannabis extracts. And, you know, Mr. Ferry is a brilliant inventor. He is a pioneer in exploding field of cannabis extracts. And this was commented by Charles Yon, who's the chairman of Cali. And uh, this man is a force to be reckoned with. This guy's a genius. And I think there's going to be so much more to see from this stock. And I'm going to leave this to Jim because he's been talking about Cali in quite a few videos. And we've been bullish on Cali. And uh, I know it's in the OTC sector, but I think this is one to still keep watching. And Jim, you talk about what's happening with Cali because I've been watching this all week. Yep. And just look at this chart on this thing. And I mean, we call, I think we called this stock, or I called this stock right around 29, somewhere around 0 0.003. So we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days of just solid upward bound here. And I told Vegas this morning, I said, if we get to two cents, and look at here, right where that candle is. We kind of hesitated there on the stock here, and I'm going to pull up a five-day chart. But we're, we've hit exceeded all-time highs on this, okay? So let me change the fact the days here. You can see the breakout and how I played this. Well, about four days ago, this idiot comes out, and he bashes his stock, says it's worthless. And I'm going, What? You know, that's about the time that they're talking about the farm bill. So the farm bill gave this company a big boost. A, a lot of these CBD oils got a big boost on this farm bill. So I think we're not, we're just now beginning to scrape the ice on the pond right now. So this thing pulled back, and I called this pullback right here around 9.3. And I've been talking about this stock for at least the last four or five videos, because I just can't take it off. I'm going to get as many listeners I can to, to understand what this company's about so we had one after that day that next day it broke out it consolidated and then we had the bounce yesterday and then today we had the big bounce I'm gonna bring this down to a one day and I told people in the room when it opened up here at 18 when it opened up at 18 if this thing goes to 2 we're gonna have a breakout and then we might go ahead and see two five and maybe three. And that's exactly what I said before the market even opened. What bounced on up, we had the pullback right here. It hit the 50 SMA on the daily one minute, run that 50 all the way up. Then when you see a little sign of weakness, and I keep telling everybody when that 50 starts to curve down, that's when you want to start maybe get scaling out taking a little profit and wait for the pullback to find that support which I had driven on this line right here and we bounced right up off of it now, I could have made it up here but for some reason I put that trend line right there and it landed right on it so it bounced on up then we pulled back and almost hit it again we had see the negative come down so we're very bullish on this stock it pulled back again right here to about 229 so we might have hit a resistance for now so we want to come in here tomorrow and maybe consolidate a little bit more and then have another breakout any kind of knife on this thing go ahead and jump in it but be careful we love Cali we love the new person they brought on board this stocks going a lot of places I'm definitely still a hundred percent bullish on it and the next one we're gonna bring up is a China play Yes. So we're going to talk about UXIN. And um, this company here, for those of you that don't know uh, UXIN Limited, hopefully I'm pronouncing that one right. Um, this is like people compare it to the Chinese Baidu. I mean, definitely Baidu, as you guys know, um, they actually own shares of uh, UXIN and are a e-com site for the used car uh, business so I mean if you guys know I mean in, in Canada you know we have a site called 
autotrader.ca. Uh, so similar to that. And uh, you can go in there and you can go to the website. You can pick um, whatever car you want to buy. And then, you know, you see the, mod the make, model, and you then, from there, you can actually get, you can apply for financing. And then basically, if everything checks out, your car's ready for pickup. That's so like a one-stop shop for you to get a car, a used car. So uh, UXIN has been um, doing extremely well. And I want Jim to show his prediction this morning. I got to tell you guys, this man's incredible. Um, he predicted this morning before the stock even started running, okay, um, that the stock, he was predicting that this is going to go to $9.23. And, like, I don't know how he does this. This was, like, before, like, maybe 20 minutes into the morning. And um, he already made that, that prediction. And I thought, okay, let's just see what happens. And look at this chart after hours. Um, I'm absolutely incredible. And so, Jim, you talk about this UXIN because you actually love this stock. Yep. And I know you've been talking about this, and we've talked about this company before. Yep. But you've been talking about this for the last little while, too. Yep. So people that are listening and watching the YouTubes, you guys should be making money out there. Yeah, about you know, it was kind of hard to hold the fort down when Vegas was gone, and but I did the best I could. And a lot of stocks that I did pick were pretty good runners. I just kept playing the ones that I thought had momentum. So this is, I'm going to pull up the year's chart on this. This has been out for six months. We got a year high of 1049 we want to meet. And if we meet that, we could break that 52 week, six, six month high. It's almost said 52 weeks. <laughs> But it, then that was at 1049. But look at the look at the bottom play we called it on this stock. And I have no fear about China and their cars. I don't think the tariffs are bothering them anything at all, one bit. So this is kind of what I think boosted this stock. And it was had a low of 281 and ran all the way up today to a daily high. Let me pull that up. And I'm just going to first pull up this five minute and show you what I was seeing and how I come across that number that I was talking about. I already had a resistance line for a, a long resistance here, but this was yesterday's high here. At, you see what I'm saying? Right at 922. And so that's how I come up with it. When that thing sold off and, it, and I was still very bullish on it, it hit my trend line channel that I had right here. So I knew it was going to bounce up once it broke that and bounced above it. And we rose above it, and then we pulled back, and I said, this thing's going to go right back to that previous high of the day before. And here we went. About the end of the day, we hit that 922, and then we broke past to my other resistance that I had here at 967, which even put icing on the cake. So I'm very bullish on this stock, but if there's a point where you got to start for it to relax a little bit, and I think we're getting up to that point right now. So if we can touch that high, that's going to be the judgment day. And if we can break the, past that, I'm going to start adding some new numbers on it. But it's going to be just probably, you know, I, I'll just have to wait until I see the action. Because it's going to mean a lot about the spread and the way the tape is. So I'm going to bring this down to just a daily and show you how we played the stock. It was so beautiful. And I had the trend line right here already set for nine, uh, 793 from yesterday. Okay, this was from yesterday. So when we bounced up and we had that breakout and it pulled back right to that trend line. And that's what's so marvelous about the way I like to read charts. And I've been doing this for about 14 years. So it bounced on up from that trend line would have been a great entry at 792. And it bounced all the way up to eight to 987. Now it pulled back and hit that 100 SMA and it bounced up and hit the 50. So that's, we're going to come in here tomorrow, and I'm going to maybe suggest we're going to see that 922. If not, it'll pull back to this next support level here at 872 and bounce up from there. So let's keep this thing on watch. I've been bullish on it. I've been repeatedly saying it. So if you've been following me, you had plenty of time to get down there at that low level of 3 bucks and run it up 300 and some percent in a matter of eight days. 
This oh is my U god, that's an amazing. U-X-I-N. Let's see if we can get it to consolidate a little bit, because the breakout after hours, was, I mean, today was just wonderful. And you seen what it did yesterday. It pulled back a good two bucks, or dollar seventy-five. So the same reaction can happen tomorrow, but let's see if it takes it to that low support of 874, 873, and that's UXIN. Keep it on your watch list. And then okay. Vegas has got a real hot one here. This is really going to blow your mind. <laughs> well, you know, when Jim and I were like planning a list of things to talk about, I'm like, oh my God, in the middle of talking to me, oh my God. There's news. There's news. It's like, what? I said, I got to add this to the list. So you know what, guys? I have to add this in here because there's a lot of people that are into the pot plays. And, uh, you know, maybe even, you know, mid-cap, large-cap traders like it. So I have to talk about Tilray, T-L-R-Y. And the reason is because Budweiser uh, has joined the growing ranks of alcohol giants. And they have uh, made a partnership with this Tilray, who's obviously from Canada. And the two companies, uh, PR was just released about oh, less than an hour ago. Uh, so this is fresh news um, that the two companies will jointly conduct research into non-alcoholic cannabis-infused beverages. Does this not like sound like an Enbev potential down the road with maybe Coca-Cola? Who knows? Uh, but this is just all things that I'm imagining one day. Um, but each company is actually going to invest $50 million oh in the partnership, which is limited, by the way, to just Canada. Okay. So the decision about commercialization will be made at a later time. And one of the things they're going to look to commercialize as well will be, get this, marijuana edibles. Because, <laughs> um, because they won't be legal in Canada until 2019. So uh, the Tilray shares have been jumping based on this news, I think over $3 a share after hours. And um, the uh, New Age Beverage Corp, uh, which has said it wants to launch a line of cannabis infused beverages. Uh, so isn't that uh, uh, NBEV? Also is up 6.3% after hours. <laughs> so I'm telling you, what one what, what goes on with one stock sometimes creates a reaction in the other stocks. So I mean, if you're not in Tilray, you're probably an Enbev, you know. Um, and uh, AB Enbev is the third alcohol company to partner or invest in a Canadian marijuana producer. Um, since, as you guys know, marijuana became legal in October, uh, Molson Coors uh, Brewing. Uh, signed a joint venture with Hexo Corp. And as you guys know, Constellation Brands is now the biggest shareholder in Canopy Growth. And tobacco company Altura also announced a $1.8 billion in CRON, which is the Kronos Group, this month. So as you can see, this cannabis uh, companies are partnering up. So don't be shocked to hear other PRs down the road with other companies that have a good good uh line of business and you know don't forget i always talk about david's tea i mean david's tea could see something going on uh because that stock's pulled back so who knows but anyhow um i want you i want to mention this um unlike the constellation and altria deals both of which include the option to take majority control in the future tell ray ceo brendan kennedy has confirmed that we want to remain independent. We want to control our destiny. We have not sold our company to anyone. And we are not looking to get bought or acquired. Okay. So thanks, Brendan, for confirming that to the shareholders. So that's great, great, great news. Uh, the talks for this deal were, uh, have been happening for a year, making the deal one of the best kept secrets in the rumor saturated marijuana business. And um, apparently, you know, the executive, Brendan, uh, was meeting uh, in Seattle, in New York, and in Toronto. Um, and they were talking about what's going on with this shared vision 
And then they realized that, hey, you know what? We have good synergies. I think we should collaborate. And this is how the partnership uh, came about. And the partnership is the second announced by Tilray this week. Because you guys remember uh, earlier this week, and I don't know if Jim had a chance to mention it, but on Tuesday, uh, Tilray did confirm that they also reached an agreement with a division of a Swiss drug giant, Novartis, to develop and distribute medical marijuana and legal jurisdictions around the world, which made the stock run 16%. So, you know, since the stock has gone public in July, uh, this is the second largest pot company by market value. And um, this is really great news. And this company, for those of you wondering, like where in Canada, is this company uh tilray is located in london ontario and um also where um ab and bev subsidiaries labat breweries of canada uh, also has a facility in london ontario as well so i wonder if they were meeting in london to do a little chat chat so good good job these two companies are also going to be creating uh jobs in that city so this is great for the economy as well. Uh, so, you know what? Stay tuned for more expansion, more partnerships with maybe other tickers that have a similar type of business. So over to Jim now on the stock and chart. Jim? Yeah, if you can out there, pull up this ad that's on Wahoo Finance and read this article about this. This is really interesting. It talks about a bunch of companies forming mergers and stuff here in the past month or two now i'm serious this, this sector and don't take me wrong this and i've been on this sector for almost 10 years watching this sector and i was yelling out people you know it's time to really start considering buying this stuff now you're getting up here where the prices are getting up and they're getting high and i don't think we've seen nothing yet because this is going to take over a lot of pharmaceutical companies and they're going to start crying there's going to be a little battle cry coming out from them. And a lot of these investors, which we're seeing now, institutional investors and, and mergers. And if anybody knows anything about Wall Street or about companies, when mergers start coming in, that's when you start thinking, okay, we're, we're in a milestone here. We're in a milestone. So I'm, and, and read this article if you get a chance to pull it up. I'm 100% bullish on this sector. So this is Tillery. Vegas and I called this thing when the IPO came first out here at 20 bucks. 20 bucks. And then within a couple of months, this thing ran up all the way to 300. It went berserk. So it had its initial run, its initial breakout. And it's pulled out. And I've called this thing from $100. Anything from $100 for a while, I was saying, play this stock. And you could have played that from $100 for almost... A month and a half here or two months and so we've pulled back and some fat cat wanted to get in here and bash Tillery about oh, a week and a half ago and I was just laughing at him he said it was gonna drop 50% I think he just wanted to get his fingers in the trap so what's going on we're gonna pull up I'm gonna pull up a 20 day and we've had the big sell-off and we called this out in the room at 64. I had a target of 55 to 45 on this stock after that idiot posted that bashing article about this stock. And I'm just laughing. So we're, here we are. We had a great run yesterday. We pulled back to support right here. You see that bottom? We hit that bottom here around 70 or $71. And it bounced up to 81 Now, with this news that we just got today, I'm going to see this thing run up here. I'm going to see it back at 100 bucks. T L R Y. Keep it on watch. Add a little <clears throat> bit of inventory because I, I heard a big uh, pension plan in California bought into this stock too. So there, this, this, the money's coming in. And the government passed that farm bill. They're going to get a lot of the CBD oil. So, I mean, this is really a catalyst for maybe a couple, two year run at least. And I'm putting that out and, there. Yeah, and I just want to mention, I was saying that Tilray is in London, but Tilray, the processing facility, I just want to clarify, is in London, Ontario. But Tilray is actually based on Vancouver Island, okay? So um, <clears throat> just to clarify that in case 
those of you that know Tilray say, what is she talking about? It's in Vancouver. <laughs> so they do have a processing facility in London, and uh, but they are based in Vancouver. Beautiful place of Canada. If you don't, if you love traveling, you should check out Vancouver, Canada. Beautiful, beautiful place. And it's run. Okay. And after hours, it run from, with this news, it ran from 70 bucks all the way up to 85. That's a $15 oh my bounce. God. Look at that. I should have traded that. Yeah, and now it's pulled back to the moving averages. And Look I used, like spot. I've said over and over and over and over and over, we had a golden cross right here. I'm going to go ahead and circle that golden cross. I like to educate while I talk on here because I think it really helps out people. But when that 50 crosses up over the 100 and the 200, look at that. You could have had you a nice little $13 bounce. And now we're touching back. So this thing's going to be at 100 bucks tomorrow, if not by the end of the week. And don't let the fears of Wall Street bring you down on this sector, because people are going to play this sector, the medical marijuana sector, no matter what. And it's been very bullish for two months since definitely since the legalization up in Canada and it's going worldwide so the next one we're going to talk about and and remember the farm bill has made a big difference in all this sector too it's a big help and the government wants to get their fingers in on it too so the next oh. one we're going to, the next one we're going to talk about Vegas I'll let you bring it up oh it's okay a, I just wanted to just mention a, uh ARQL. Yeah. Uh, just to have that one on your watch list. Um, you know, I've been watching it all day today, kind of like the volume a little bit. This uh, ARQL. Um, and what intrigued me a little bit too, because you guys know I love reading the tape, um, is I really liked these some after hour buys, uh, two specific blocks, one around 53,000 shares, one around 55,000 shares, both around $2.90 buying at the ask so i do like that um about the stock and i do like the volume today and coincidentally i think jim and i were looking at the chart together and uh he actually liked uh what he was seeing there on the on the stock but just briefly just to let you guys know so this company is in massachusetts and um let me just see here i gotta find it here on uh, ARQL. So do you guys know what the, what the company does? No? Yeah? No? So they are obviously in a clinical, they're, you know, pharmaceutical company. They're into clinical trials. Um, they were actually also, just to mention, um, they have been selected. This is news, fresh news from today. Uh, they have been selected for inclusion in the NASDAQ Biotechnology Index, which is called the NBI. Okay, and this is great for the company. Uh, this will take effect prior to the open on Monday, December 24th. And the index, um, if no one's heard of this before, is designed to track the performance of a set of securities listed on the NASDAQ. So that is actually very good news uh, that they've been selected because you can't just be, I wanna be on that list you have to be selected and chosen. So this is good news uh, to have them listed on the uh, new um, little exchange there. Yeah, so I, I like didn't know them. that. Me? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that until just now. And that came yeah, out today, so they're, yeah. They're going to be on the index. Uh, so I think that's great. And uh, they're going to be um, classified as either biotech or pharmaceutical, uh, according to the industry classification benchmark. And um, this is great because the requirements include a minimum market cap and average daily trading volume. So uh, this is actually very good for the company. And um, this is great. So not only that, but the company is very involved in um, research and therapeutic treatments for cancers and rare diseases. And their mission, and this is, I, I mean, I like the mission. I mean, who wouldn't? Uh, to discover and develop and commercialize drugs in areas that are unmet that can extend and improve the lives of patients love a company that loves doing that so uh keep arql on watch and i want jim to talk about the chart because i like what i'm seeing on this chart and jim you tell us what you see yeah i, I i'm going to pull up a year's chart here and and, I, and I, I haven't looked at it until vegas i mean i've talked about it and looked at it but once i pulled up the chart i seen this red line on here and i said well i wonder what that's on there for 
And as I study it, it what I'm seeing is this is going to be like a, a yearly pivot point. It could go up a little bit higher right here, maybe, to around 317. But I had a 386 on here for some reason. And here we are, right here, 386. 286, I mean. So that kind of caught my eyes. So I'm going to bring this down to a 20-day chart. And I'm going to just draw a few trend lines in here. You can get a little taste of how I, how I do this. I'll take that and I'm going to run me a little resistance level right there around 398. I'm going to have us a little support level right here around 290. Low support right around 280. You know, and a bottom play here at 273 if it wants to break that. Draw a trend line there. I'm going to bring it up. Bounce it right about there. So we're going to have a little target. We're going to watch this tomorrow. We're going to analyze it. It's definitely on watch. I don't think either one of us are in it, are we? Probably not. She didn't answer. So right. No, no, I'm here. Not at the moment. Not at the moment. Okay. I do want to make one other comment quickly. Is that also this was a bullish um, rating, uh, and this was mentioned at the Ash Conference. They were at the Ash Conference, but Oppenheimer has a, a buy rating on this as well which they did share and they're looking to target around uh 533 is their oh price boy. yeah oh boy and i do like the action here at the end of the day where it kind of had a double bottom so i think mm -hmm. we had us a double bottom and we closed up a little bit after hours i want to pull that up and show you that see that so let's keep this thing on watch let's try to find us a little channel to play We'll see if we can break it up to resistance right around three bucks, three seventeen, and we hope to get past that. That'll be a resistance, and then we'll try to carry it up to three thirty, and then from then on out three thirty seven, and then we'll just see what. Then we'll bring it up again if this thing starts to run tomorrow in the aftermarket report. But today it's on watch, and that's yeah, just AR, on watch. Yeah, ARQL. And uh, last least so i just want to quickly talk about what spooked the market about the fed rates today so i just want to cover some information um that i have here you know when i was watch, uh, watching and reading information on cnbc not that we love everything believe me a lot of crap is said on there but i gotta tell you a lot of people were pissed off i don't blame them uh that i you know never has people have people seen in the history of the markets that four rate increases in a year like what the f was going on like that is such bullshit and people are pissed off and um you know the the feds failed to sound like it was ready to pull from its tighter policy path as much as markets had expected they um they did hike the interest rates but it did not remove uh the language in the statement that would imply a slower path to rate hikes and Jerome Powell also rattled the markets by saying that the Fed was satisfied with its program to shrink the balance sheet and it has no plans to change course now if you guys remember Janet Yellen okay not everyone loved the woman she was the federal chair she was around you know chair and you know people couldn't stand her but you know what? I guarantee people would love her back because at least, you know, Janet Yellen, uh, you know, we kind of knew what was going on with her. But I got to tell you, this Powell, I mean, I want to know if this guy even owns any stocks. Like, does this guy have any stocks that he raised the rates today? Um, so the rates were raised by a quarter point as expected and lowered its median rate forecast to two hikes from three next year will be uh the central bank also uh as i mentioned obtained the language statement um but what really scared the markets was that the fed chairman powell said that the people were satisfied with the balance sheet and they were they weren't going to make changes and traders you know traders view that as another tightening path since the Fed is reducing the balance sheet by making fewer purchases as Treasury and mortgage securities uh, holds to maturity. And, um, you know, it was mentioned by a market strategist from Luthold Group 
uh, James Paulson, he stated that, you know, I think the market's reaction to all of this is the Fed's going to overdo it. And he's like, how else can you look at this? And, uh, it smells at a minimum like a really big slowdown in the economy that's coming, maybe even something worse. And um, Powell says he sees no problem with the balance sheet runoff and that um, that's the one that hurts, is what <coughs> Paulson said. So uh, strategists had warned that the market was braced for a very dovish Fed and stock traders had been hoping for a big bounce in the market after the Fed move. But the Fed retained a comment in its statement, as we mentioned, that it would further gradual rate hikes and changed it only by adding the word some. And uh, Fed watchers had expected the language to be removed and replaced by an indication that would be more dependent on economic data. So there's a lot of nuance in the decision. I think it's very clear from the statement of Powell that it is not poised to turn sharply dovish. And um, obviously, um, no one is very happy. So what happened in a lot of cases is stocks were sold off initially, then they bumped around before spiraling lower again. The Dow and the S&P 500 fell through the lows of the year and bond yields fell. The Dow closed 1.5% lower at um, 2.3 and then uh, the S&P 500 was off 1.5% at 2506. The 10 year yield 2.75% its lowest level since April. Like what? That's not even a joke, right? Get it? April Fools. Um, it just reinforces that between the Fed hike and shrinking its balance sheet, it's a double tightening in 2019. If I think it's just reinforced that the market did not get the dovish hike that it was looking for. And that was mentioned by Peter uh, Bookfarth, who's the chief investment strategist at uh, Blakely Advisory Group. So, you know what? Uh, not very happy with this rate hike at all. And a lot of people are not going to have a Merry Christmas. Um, you know, a lot, I just want to make one other comment. I read an article about uh, people that are supposedly supposed to retire soon and had so much of their uh, money in pension plans and pension money that was invested. And a lot of like, you know, I guess what you call, you know, uh, large cap stocks like the FANG stocks. And a lot of those people, the value of their pension plan has gone down 30 to 50% that some of those people are planning to retire apparently are not going to retire on a full-time basis. They're going to reduce their hours because now they're saying they can't afford to live off the money based on the valuation of their pension plan. Like, I am like, wow, that is so scary. So, Jim, what do you have to say about all this? Because I know you have, <laughs> you are not too thrilled either. No, I wasn't and, thrilled I mean, at you've all. You've been in the markets a long time, longer. So you tell the viewers you know, maybe your thoughts, and then we'll wrap this up. You know, everybody has an opinion, that's for sure. But what I, Janet Yellen, she kind of thought, uh, looked at the whole picture, which was a, year, a world economy. And she knew that if she screwed the rates up here, it would affect the whole world. And I'm seeing right now a world recession. I'm seeing, you know, China having issues. I'm, Europe's having major issues over there with riots and crying about tax hikes and and so I think this new idiot that got up there is just thinking about America. And our economy is the best I've seen in my lifetime right now. But basically, four times in a year, and we didn't have a, a, a rate, I mean a raise in eight years solid when all that free money was getting up there and handed over to the feds. I mean, we print, printed more than $4 trillion to them, giving them $87 billion a month for two years. And they treat the the private sector like it's trash, because now there's a whole new there's a whole new uh, environment now. We got people that are out, freshly out of high school. I know a 17 year old kid that's made over five million dollars in the past three months playing the options on the spy, and then so there's money to be made. But now we're down here at the Dow Jones, and the thing dipped down below a year's average. I mean, wake up. America, and especially wake up them feds. So that's all I got to say. I'm not too happy about it. Not four years, not right before Christmas, and and like Vegas said, people going into retirement. This this could trigger, and a lot of people have cash in their hands right now, so they're just kicking back. 
I'm playing these bottoms as we go, but yet a lot of people don't know how to do that, and they'll just wait until they think they hit a bottom and get back in it. So I'm hoping 2019 we're going to get over this by the end of the year, then we're going to have a nice 2019, and we're going to gain back all the early gains that we lost in 2018. And that's my opinion. Okay, Vegas, you, you want to say the final comments before we leave? This is also, well, also I'm going to uh, tell everybody I really did miss Vegas, and she's back. She's back in the saddle, and she's ready to ride the range. <laughs> well, I'm back, guys. <laughs> and girls, my girl traders, I got to say, I am so excited. I love that all these women traders are coming to visit uh, us and chat. Uh, I've just met so many great uh, female traders and I'm so loving it and I hope that there's more of you that please come there and not be shy and, and come say hi um, I actually have uh, a phenomenal uh, woman trader that uh, messaged me today that's in our chat and uh, I will give her a shout out probably tomorrow because I want to ask her permission but she actually joined the chat and the cutest thing her and her mother they trade together mother and daughter like they both decided they would, you know, they, they trade and they trade together and they were in the chat and she messaged me today and says, you know, my mom was trading with me and listening to the, you, you and Jim on boys. And she's been listening a lot more to Jim in the last little while because I was away, but she said that her mom actually wants to join. And so her mother's going to join the room too. All right. So I was like, that's awesome. A mother daughter team. I said, Oh my God, I got to talk to you. So I love that. Um, there's, um, you know, such a nice diversified team and, uh, it really is all about the team. Say when you love what you do, you do what you love. It's just like amazing. So it feels great to be back. I sound a little bit, a little, uh, you know, uh, raspy ish because of my cold, but maybe it'll, um, you recover soon. And, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm just happy. I missed Jim. I missed everybody. We're happy to be back uh, together, and yep. uh, we will talk with you guys again tomorrow. And uh, thanks you to all the followers on YouTube for being patient for my return. So thank you for not unsubscribing and uh, following and listening to Jim because he's giving you guys calls. He's trying to help you guys make money. So please share the channel with friends that you feel could benefit with our guidance and uh, information on stocks because I try to keep things on a very basic level so that um, everyone understands. I don't want to talk at a high level, corporate level, because I come from the corporate sector, but I don't want to talk at that level because at the end of the day, I just want to be spoken to in plain English and just cut to the any BS. So I try to keep it simple so everyone can understand because I want everyone to learn and everyone to make money. So on that note, I love stocks. I love everybody, and I love that I'm back. We extended this to an extra long video just to show the appreciation that we do have for Vegas. So everybody, subscribe to our I Love Stocks channel. Hit that bell so you can get our updates. And this oh, yeah. is yeah, oh yeah, we can't forget about that. Oh no, and, and everybody you know that's in. And everybody that's in my YouTube channel, I want you to transfer and follow the I Love Stocks channel. And there's a link provided for you to do that. In, yes, in the room. and we hope you like our new intro today. So please comment below. And also, uh, Jim and I have uh, some surprises that we'll share on Sunday. I think you guys will like what we have. We got viewer feedback. And so we have a few little surprises to share Sunday's video because you guys know we don't do a video Friday, Saturday, but we will do one on Sunday. So please stay tuned for that. So please ring the bell and subscribe and follow. So see you tomorrow. And if you're not in the chat, come on in. We'd love to meet you. Yeah, I just posted the SPY here too. And I just posted the Dow. But look at the SPY. We're also at a year low on the SPY. So, you know, it, I mean, it's sold off all the way from here, all the 20 some points on the SPY. So let's see if we can get a little Christmas Santa Claus rally, come back to the, at least the support level on this thing around 256. I'm going to hit a target right around 256.53 is what I want to see. So this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, December the 19th, 2019.
2018 and we love stocks. Okay.